All right, welcome everybody. It is just about 1230. We're going to get started with Andrew Neighbors, our respiratory therapist at Valley Sleep Center. He is talking to us today about a mouth breather's guide to CPAP. And we'll have a question and answer period at the end of his presentation. And while he is presenting, I will get everybody's name in a drawing. And before the questions, I'll announce the winner, first name only, of the CPAP pillow. So thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. So welcome, everybody. We're going to talk about CPAP for mouth breathers. It's always a, uh, it's a topic where most people believe that consistently that everybody's a mouth breather. Everybody gets ge geared into full face masks. Everybody's using these concepts. And well, there's a lot of truth behind all this stuff. There's some fiction. There's some truths. There's some gray areas. And I'm going to try to work it all out for everybody to kind of give you perspectives. Um, at the end of this, Laurie is selecting a winner for a CPAP pillow. So I'm going to bring that up first so everybody can get a kind of an idea of what a CPAP pillow actually is. So this is the product and it's called a contour CPAP pillow. If you see it, get, get the concept behind it, it's got these cuts in the pillow, okay? So the cuts are designed for your mask to hang off the edge. Um, the pillow itself has multiple different heights depending on obviously your comfort level. It is a memory foam pillow. So it gives you an idea of kind of how you can set up depending on your, the, how you like to sleep. Side sleeping, side back, back sleepers, stomach sleepers, and so on and so forth. You can adjust the height of the pillow. Um, this is the pillow in a, uh, in a, of course, a pillow case. It gives you a perspective idea of what it looks like with a full face mask sleeping on your side. Hopefully nobody in this chat is using that full face mask. It's a thousand years old. Um, if you are, we really got to find something new for you. But let me bring up the uh, slideshow and we can get this next process uh, going. And here we are, CPAP for mouth breathers. All right. So are you a mouth breather? And the thing is, is that most people in the world are not mouth breathers. We are not designed to be mouth breathers as human beings. We're designed to be nose breathers. Our nose humidifies the air. It's a filter. Now, can a person be a mouth breather? Absolutely. Are there reasons why you're a mouth breather? Most likely you are a lot of reasons. Does a person mouth breathe? Absolutely, I'm doing it right now because I'm talking. Also, if you're exercising or you're sick and things like that, these are massive reasons on why a person be a mouth breather. And mouth breathing is a common sign of sleep apnea. <clears throat> One of the most common side effects of sleep apnea would be a dry throat, a dry mouth and a stubby nose. Okay, and if that's something that you have had or prior to CPAP, do have, it can be a sign that you're not breathing particularly well and you're using your mouth to compensate. Snoring leads to nasal congestion, nasal congestion leads to breathing through your mouth, that sort of stuff. Um, you know, mouth breathing can pose a lot of issues, okay? Primarily, if you're mouth breathing with CPAP, it can dry your mouth out, If you, especially with the types of masks, some of them direct air right at your mouth, blowing right in, a lot of dryness, a lot of issues. So there's some pros and cons uh, regarding mouth breathing whether or not you may need to be specifically directed at a full face mask and that's just the way it goes. Um, or could a nasal mask or a nasal pillow mask actually be a better route for you? Could it be a, a solution for your mouth breathing? So why do we mouth breathe? Well, anatomy, that's huge. What if you have a deviated septum or your nose is plugged or you broke your nose, I don't know, 50 times to you. I had a guy who was a cop he been. He said, "I got punched in the nose so many times I can't breathe through my nose." Well, you're a mouth breather. You know, sinus congestion. Obviously, you're sick. It's allergy season. Something like that. That's a huge given. Um, also, er, like earlier today, I had a guy. He. We were discussing. We were talking about his uh, his issues with his nose breathing, and he was doing a yearly follow-up. His data was down a little bit. His usage was down. He wasn't as good as he was a year ago. States he'd been using Afrin daily for his nose because his nose is always congested. And he had a lot of people getting on his backside about using Afrin because ultimately Afrin is not good to use consistently. It's like a rescue thing once, that's it. Afrin's not a daily thing. So like the whole direction behind his nasal congestion is, is probably gotten worse 
from this consistent Afrin use. So there were some directions that we gave them to help the nose. Um, sleep apnea. Obviously, you're not breathing well. Okay, you're having a difficulty breathing. Your throat is closing off. You have to get air in somehow. So there goes that mouth sucking wide open. Your mouth's open. You're looking like a fish. Uh, you're sick. You're ill. You have a. You're obviously not just the nasal congestion. That could be allergies or something. But you're actually legitimately sick, and you're having shortness of breath or something along those lines. Uh, REM sleep. Uh, REM sleep is. It's very common for a person to fall into REM sleep and have a little bit of a a drop in their mouth. And when a person's using a CPAP, say you're using a nasal mask and your mouth pitches open a little bit and the air comes out of your mouth. It makes a vibrating sound and air blowing through. You get a dry throat, you get a dry mouth, those sort of things. Um, your data reporting might show very minor amounts of leakage, a very small amount, but maybe you're startled awake from it. Maybe it's disturbing your sleep and it, it's hindering your REM sleep uh, production. You're not getting enough of it. So sleep apnea and mouth breathing. So the major reason that you're going to mouth breathe with sleep apnea is you're compensating. You have to get that, that air in your mouth. Your, your, your throat's closed off, as you can see in the, the diagram. The tongue, the back of the mouth, the throat, everything's closing off. And if anybody's ever had a hard time breathing, they got to get that air in. Okay, It's associated with, of course, the snoring, the gasping. Uh, you can have chronic sinus congestion. And a lot of times that's snoring, the reverberating back into your nose, causing the nose to swell up and snoring. You can get a lot of dry mouth. That's obviously a massive sign of that. I had, um, I had nasal congestion earlier this week. I, was up, I went up north. I must have picked something up up north and I come home and Sunday night, my nose was plugged and I was breathing through my mouth. So my mouth was dry. I was getting slugs of water and such. Uh, chronic dry mouth and chronic mouth breathing can lead to tooth decay. So it is definitely something you want to manage. Treating mouth breathing with CPAP. So a lot of people who are introduced into, C into CPAP get directed into the full face mask realm. And there's a lot of reasons for it, um, depending on how a person um, was evaluated or not evaluated or how a person was um, studied. Uh, there are times where a, a person will do a sleep study and they'll ask a couple questions about, oh, do you mouth breathe, do you this? And a lot of times the answers are, yeah, I mouth breathe. So the sleep technician a lot of times will just divert to a full face mask. And that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the mask you forever have to use. It's a mask that they're choosing to use for you for that night, the one night that they need a clean study to, better, to give a better assessment on how to treat your particular sleep disorder. So it's very common for a person who uses a CPAP to get pigeonholed into a full face mask. It's not that they don't work, they do, but it's important to allow CPAP to kind of help retrain our brain into uh, breathing through our nose more consistently. Um, the constant pressure from the CPAP, the whole point of it is obviously to get a person breathing normal. And if you breathe normal through your nose throughout the day, you shouldn't breathe through your mouth at night, okay? So the mouth breathing element, while it may still happen sometimes, feel like it is. But mouth breathing while on treatment on a CPAP, it can disturb your sleep. It can lead to dry mouth, a scratchy throat, sore throat, it's not fun to deal with. So getting the correct mask to start your treatment is very important. Um, also, it's also a good idea to maybe look at different mask styles if you're feeling like you're breathing well through your nose. You feel like you're, maybe your nose isn't so, your mouth isn't so, mouth breathing isn't so much of a problem. So treating mouth breathing, the one of the major, another major factor besides giving the air pressure is adequate humidification. All of these machines that are delivered today have a humidifier, okay? Some of them are pre-built in, like you can't get rid of the humidifier. It's already there. And that's the most common system on the market, the ResMed AirSense 10 system. So the humidification, our body needs 100% humidity by the, by the time the air is in our lungs anyways. So if you're breathing this dry air, it can cause nasal congestion. The dryness can cause your nose to plug up and then you are using a full face mask or mouth breathing significantly and disturbing your sleep and so on and so forth. As I did mention, the full masks can be a misconception. Not every single person who has been given a full mask or delivered a full mask 
should be using a full mask. They can work, they all work, but do you have to use it, okay? Another thing about the mouth breathing element is that you should practice with your breathing, okay? Like if you were to put a CPAP on, the mask on, if you were using a nose mask, practicing while awake. Um, one of the things that, uh, when a person's like really starting to fight using their, their equipment and trying to get to sleep, like the first week is, is tough. Like you're, it's a huge transition to try to sleep with CPAP. So there are times where you might even recommend say, okay, your bedtime is 10 o'clock. 9.30, crawl into bed, put your mask on and start breathing with it. It's just kind of watch TV. You know, obviously you're not supposed to watch TV in bed, but we do it anyways. We're victims of our own world. Um, you know, read a book or something to just kind of breathe. You practice with the breathing, um, making sure your system has, is the proper pressures, proper therapy for you. Some people with breathing issues might need to go away from CPAP, might need to go to a BiPAP machine or something more advanced. Decongestance is always a win. It can be anything from, you know, like I said, that guy was using Afrin. It's not recommended to use Afrin often, but if you're having that one off night and you need to get it open because you can need to sleep, once, fine. But decongestants, nasal decongestants, flonase, sinus rinses, saline rinses and stuff help. Um, every single mask delivers the same therapy. So getting the correct fit is very important. Um, the last variable is if you are using a nasal mask and your mouth does kind of drift open for that REM sleep that I mentioned, a chin strap can help alleviate that as an issue. So full masks, full face masks like this, this guy here is using the, uh, the ResMed AirSense uh, or AirFit F20. Very popular mask, a very simple mask, very easy mask. They make two versions of this, the silicone and a memory foam fit. Both of them are excellent. They are definitely the easiest to use doesn't matter how you breathe with this mask. A lot of patients can find that when they put this on, that their breathing can feel the most natural because they can use that mouth, that instance where they feel like they need to use their mouth. Um, and it may absolutely be necessary. You're gonna tend to have more air leaks because it's a bigger surface area and facial hair issues. I have a beard. A lot of, every patient with a beard is gonna leak. I absolutely do not recommend shaving. The systems make up for air leakage, but it can facilitate some dryness issues. You can run out of water a little faster. And well, it's the nature of a full face mask. Um, patients can be pushed into these full face masks just based on uh, the DME companies, maybe not evaluating the patient, just handing them over these masks and saying, this is what you're gonna use and goodbye. Not a proper evaluation. What do you do if you are a mouth breather? Well, if you're, a, if you're feeling, you know, even after a full night's sleep, if you're feeling sleepy and tired, you're, you may have sleep apnea. That could be your major reason why you're mouth breathing because you're having a, a difficulty sleeping. And obviously sleep apnea left untreated, chronic sleep de deprivation. I mean, you can fall asleep while driving. There's a lot of chronic health issues that can be de delivered from this, heart disease, diabetes, you know, strokes, uh, mood disorders. Um, you know, it, it affects our ability to, feel like a normal human being. Bad sleep is an awful thing that nobody should have to deal with on a regular basis. So if you tend to mouth breathe or you're mouth breathing on treatment and it's disturbing sleep or causing problems, making some adjustments or getting the proper treatment is going to facilitate a better health. Obviously, uh, a proper diagnosis is important. So if you haven't had a sleep study or haven't had a sleep study in a while or haven't been evaluated in a while, you, you can schedule for a consultation or a virtual consultation with one of us. Um, we can get you moving at least some, maybe some coaching sessions, maybe the sleep study, something along the lines to at least get your treatment working at a proper level to where you feel like you're getting adequate sleep regularly. So, and then of course our phone number. So I have a couple things in the chat. Yes, and I'll draw a name while you're looking at those. Um, if you think that you need an appointment with Andrew, uh, go ahead and type your phone number in the chat, or if you're an existing patient, just let us know that. But let's uh, open it up for questions, and uh, I'll draw the winner. Really? 